Today, ladies and gentlemen, before we break down that six-figure stock portfolio on my weekly updates, I wanted to pose a question to you newer investors out there that are probably looking at their portfolios right now during this crash, maybe down 30, 40, even 50%. And I want to ask you, why are you investing? And I want to start this question off by kind of showing you a chart. This chart represents the first year and seven months of my entire investing career, and it looked bleak at best. And trying to go on over a year without making a single dime at this kind of loses that motivation. And I want to share with you what kept me going if you are experiencing some downturns in your portfolio. But first of all, why do most people start investing? They usually get kicked up on this short-term dopamine rush that either comes from them wanting to become famous and from a guy that built his whole career in the limelight, performing for large companies, famous people, whatever. Trust me, that burns out very fast. A lot of people want to build wealth, drive around in those Lambos, look really cool, which is usually the shallowest way of thinking. But Ty Lopez, has no problem showing it on his YouTube channel. Just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. A lot of people just want to get laid, but these are like the primary short-term dopamine rushes that people get caught up in, but they burn out so fast. And you might have experienced this when you started a side hustle or a project. The first day you got into it, super exciting. But now once you're six months deep and all that dopamine burns off, you don't have any more motivation. So where does actual motivation come from? Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow, so just do it! The primary motivation, I think, comes from one of these three things. The first one is fear. The fear of being broke, homeless, unhealthy, the fear of not being able to protect your family. If you have kids, trust me, kids are one heck of a good motivator to get you past those short-term dopamine rushes. These were some of the primary reasons that kept me going through those tough times, knowing that I wanted the freedom to spend time with my family whenever I could afford to do so. The freedom of not having to show up to a job I hated. The fear of losing a job or not having the capability of to produce an income with all your eggs in one basket. Like there's a lot of reasons surrounding this that will keep you driven going forward. And I just realized that, look, when I watch some of the biggest investors out there make mistakes like Bill Ackman that bought Valiant Pharmaceuticals that tanked, lost billions of dollars. Kevin O'Leary, many mistakes. Warren Buffett even makes mistakes. Just decided to buy a whole lot more stock. <laughs> I mean, once, once, once I'd been, once I'd uh, lost my virginity, essentially, I, <laughs> I thought, why stop at one? You know? <laughs> When you realize that they're not really any more intelligent than you are, somewhere along the line, something's got to click where you're going to figure out exactly what you're doing and where you're going. But if you don't have these primary motivation factors pushing you guys, you're going to get caught up in these short-term dopamine rushes that you're just going to burn out. And when you look at your portfolio right now being down 30 or 40%, chances are you're done. Let's be real, guys. I get up every day motivated to make these videos. Heck, I've been posting a video almost every day now for a year and a half. That is not something easy to achieve. So consider Instead of slapping a like and subscribing, because what I'd like to do now is get into my six figure dividend stock portfolio. Let's jump right into this. Drop it. Welcome back. My passive income investors are like to one of the most wild roller coasters I have ever experienced in my entire investing career. Considering my portfolio hit lows it hasn't seen since like 2018 and now we are actually back to a flat year. I'm actually right where I was when I started this year, which is so crazy to say. Mind you, I'm not hitting the peaks that I hit, which was around 152,000. Right now, the portfolio is hovering around about 133, 134K, which is literally where I started this year. In an attempt to be 100% transparent, in this video, we're gonna do a year over year review of my $130,898 dividend stock portfolio. But getting right into the portfolios, I did purchase some new stocks uh, literally today, guys, and I'm going to show you the finalization of my Facebook move over here, but I'm very happy. Everything's out of the way. Taxes are paid. I don't know anyone bills in the government's throwing me money, which I'm putting into the markets here. A little bit of it anyways, keeping some of it for that emergency fund. But let's start with the tax-free savings account to launch it all off. And oh, but I've been getting a lot of share buybacks as of recent. And Rio Camp purchased some shares for me. Northland Power purchased some shares. And then we got CM and BNS, my wonderful banks 
that are still paying dividends are gonna pay me in some shares while things are really suppressed. With Northland Power probably having the best performance through all of this, this utility is still sitting toward all-time highs, which is just mind-blowing, so I don't mind picking more of it up. I feel like I'm starting to get into that range where I'm a little over-leveraged in this company, but it's one of the first stocks I ever bought. I love it a lot, and I don't think I can part ways with any of the shares I currently have. Taking a look at the U.S. half of the portfolio, we got MO and BTI holding up pretty nicely at these levels with Apple and Microsoft. Obviously, those tech giants always doing the best in a crash. It's really annoying how the, the small people get crushed and the big guys get bailed out, and they're the ones the government wants to keep pushing because they're the ones that keep the entire markets up. So yeah, Microsoft, Apple actually doing pretty good overall here along with Southern Company that if you picked it up on those dips, congratulations because it's also back to pretty much where it leveled off. A little down from the all-time highs, but just like my portfolio, it's still flat pretty much for the year. Moving into the managed account, which is where I moved my Facebook shares from over-contributing to that RRSP. I'm actually pretty glad with the current holdings in this account because at the end of the year, as you guys know, I'm going to transfer all of this money into my TFSA as they allow you to contribute about 6000 a year, which is almost, I'll get a little bit more than that in this portfolio at this point, but I'm kind of happy with where this sits. I'm definitely going to be averaging more into Facebook because the position right now is too small for my comfort level. The position that I hold, yeah, it's about a $4,000 position in this account, but I want to start scaling it back up to that seven ten thousand dollars $10,000 level. As we go into my RSP, I still hold about $1,000 worth of this stock, so I'm glad that I'm still able to keep a rather half-decent position size. I'm kind of valuing Facebook at like an eight seven fifty eight hundred billion dollar market cap you know scaling my position to over 10 grand if it grows to that level and at that point I would start scaling it down and buying dividend stocks so that's that's my goal with this growth stock if it all works out but man take a look at J and J I can't get over how lucky I was loading the boat on this company I love it with a passion too many people get turned off from the low dividend yield until you realize the performance it has is in a crash including the dividend increases this company is capable of so really glad we got that one in the RSP we got Tesla my Esla as financial education loves to say Jeremy there. And when it comes to Tesla, I'm going to be holding on to this one for a while. This one, I might not even liquidate. This is one I could hold on to for a decade just to see what happens with it because, man, it is, it's got some real potential behind it, guys. Uh, Wells Fargo is the only stock I want to scale in position uh, just because Wells Fargo is my smallest bank position. I don't even I don't even think I have $1,000 sitting in it yet, but let's go into the newer purchases I've done, and I try and primarily keep all my new purchases within my RBC account, and what I went ahead and purchased this morning for $16 and 50 cents a share was one of my favorite REITs. We're talking about Rio Can, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to cost average down, as I'm sure you're aware in this portfolio. I am down a pretty healthy chunk, about $3,000, but I still love this company, and especially at these levels, loading the boat on every opportunity I get, because this stock is going to come back sooner or later. It just, it's going to. I can promise you that. So I'm going to keep cost averaging in. I got about $1,000 of it now in this portfolio, hopefully bringing my cost average down. I'm probably going to try and purchase about another two to three thousand dollars worth of it over this year but we'll see how that goes depending on what other stocks i find interesting but taking a look there's the rest of my wells fargo position i've got about 500 in this account now worth 340 because i was buying it before the crash and obviously a little bit more bti and mo which i am so excited to see the earnings on those guys and we'll see during this crash if they're able to still prove themselves as recession proof companies heck this could be the turnaround story for mo in my opinion bti i still think is severely undervalued honestly i would love to buy more more of these that's why i've kind of reset them up on a drip as well my average buy was 45 on altria and what 39 on bti and going into this account my average buy on mo is 50 dollars, and on bti i was paying about 38 so it's keep in mind as well we got microsoft reporting earnings on the 29th and apple on the 30th but let's just get into the dividends real quick because we are pushing all time highs right now we're sitting about five thousand nine hundred and forty dollars annually or just under 500 a month i am desperately trying to push over over that barrier because that is crazy to me to be the first time ever I'd be making $500 a month off my portfolio and just screaming through this not only in my Scotia Bank account I have already added that up from my Royal Bank account and it's nice to see that these drips are finally starting to take effect we can see Northland Power slowly increasing the bank should take a little bit of a jump at the end of this month as well I'm going to be a little hesitant and careful with that MO and BTI position just because I am a little over leveraged the only problem is 
makes up a rather large chunk of my dividend income, guys. I got a lot of exposure to those companies, so I'm going to start mitigating away, but I'll still pick up some cheap shares at any opportunity within reason, obviously. Oh, which, uh, by the way, this video is brought to you by the Chartmaster.com. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to track your portfolio the way we do, it's a one-time fee, very cheap stuff. You're not paying any monthly things to see your asset allocation along with your dividend income over your many portfolios you might have, like I do. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so stay cool, stay awesome, and I look forward to catching up with you tomorrow.